Not only should the Indonesian people believe in God, but every Indonesian should believe in his own God. Like David Copperfield, I was born amidst poverty and grew up in poverty. I did not own shoes. I did not bathe in water from a tap. I did no know about forks and spoons. I always start from the stand that it is imperialism that needs us, not we who need the imperialists. Insofar as Pancasilla is concerned, I am only its formulator. A formulator of those feelings which have been present silently in the heart of the Indonesian people. If I used to say that Indonesia would be free when the corn ripens, I can now say that Indonesia will be free before it blossoms. Let us not be bitter about the past, but let us keep our eyes firmly on the future. If some nation says to us, you can have aid, but you have to end confrontation, then I say, go to hell with your aid. We feel free. Now we are really self-reliant. This is the great advantage of teaching ourselves to become a free people, no longer one that always asks, aid, aid, please. Even if you were a general in 1945, if you split the revolutionary national unity today, if you are an enemy of the main pillars of the revolution today, then you have become a force of reaction. The principle of building an economy without foreign monopoly capital has become a principle which, for us, is no longer subject to amendment. Which other people in this world stop up holes in their sidewalks with cassava, brothers and sisters? Only Indonesia itself, on account of the abundance of its food. We are a fighting nation continually struggling to overcome diseases from within, and to face up to foreign intervention from without. It is, of course, true that I have given priority to the settling of the problem of security and the problem of Irian Bharat, although I knew that in order to do these things, almost three quarters of our national product had to be spent.